Y'all, depression is a bitch that just keeps coming back. Let's talk about it. It's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, calm, and collected out there. Before starting with this video, I just want to say thank you because this channel has now reached over 300 subscribers. Y'all, that just means so much to me to the bottom of my heart. Like, you don't even know. Like, it is taking me very, very long to get to where I am today, believe it or not. Even though this may be a small platform, it's a growing platform, and I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you guys for putting up my BS. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Thank you guys for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, you name it, because this channel wouldn't grow without an audience and you guys are the absolute truth. So thank you guys so much. I swear, when I started this channel back at the beginning of the pandemic, like I legit had a lot of fear in my heart to even do what I'm doing right now. Like I would legit film videos and just not even upload them or I would upload them, but I would keep them on private. It just took me one day to just say F it. And then I went ahead and uploaded my first video and the rest has been history. So thank you guys for rocking with me and sticking with me and putting up with my BS. But today I wanted to be a little more transparent with y'all. I haven't done a transparent video ever since I did my whole Dating While Gay is Hopeless video. I'll link it to the bottom of the description box. Now, fair warning, if you don't want to see any gay shit, I mean, if you don't want to hear about any gay shit, then don't watch, but hey, you'll get a good laugh out of it. But anyways, um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that I've struggled with pretty much my whole entire life, and that is depression. Y'all, I have like crippling depression. I describe my depression as, you know how in gym or PE, you had to climb that rope. Like that's my depression. Like every day I have to constantly just climb my way out of it. Some days it's easier than most, but most days it's a struggle. Even today is a struggle. Like me, even me getting on camera, to be honest with you guys, is a struggle. That's why the videos come out super late because I'm either in like a depressed mood or I just lack energy or usually when I'm filming is when I've got myself out of my mood and I come to you guys with the BS. <laughs> but y'all, depression is a bitch. It is just the coldest, baddest bitch on this planet. Like it is just, it just keeps coming back like a bad STD. And what I've learned in my little stints with therapy is that you can't really cure depression. You just have to find the best way for you to manage it. And that's what I try to do. But some days I just, I struggle hard, y'all. Like it is a true, true damn struggle. So my depression started, I want to say, when I was around like the age of eight. Uh, my best friend had moved from Houston. And then the school that we went to together, which was actually my mom's school. She was a school nurse there. She still lives to this day. Um, it's on like the southwest side of town, but we lived on the northwest side in Cyprus. So she moved me to a school closer to home and y'all, it was like the worst experience ever. For one, I was the only black boy in the school. I mean, there were um, there was like another black girl and like a other mixed race black girl, but I wasn't really fucking with them bitches. And then everybody else was like, there was some cool white boys there, but majority of everybody just was racist basically because they were raised by their parents. And it just, it was a very racial environment. And then on top of that, I had a racist teacher that I got into it with multiple times like things got so bad my mom had to even come into that school and cuss that bitch out but also with all that at the same time I was coming to the terms with the fact that I am a little gay boy like I came to terms with my sexuality at the age of eight I'm just like okay I do like boys like I, I, I even had my first crush uh yeah it was a white boy but that that was all that was in my surroundings but being different, coming to terms with the fact that I was different and not really having that many friends like that because I was different and I felt awkward. Like I felt like I just didn't really fit in. And then we were like the only black family in our neighborhood. So I just didn't really have any friends like that. Like really the only friends that I had near me to hang out with were like my older brother's friends, little sisters. Like really my first friends in life were white girls, to be honest. But after my mom cussed that racist bitch out, she moved me to another school where there was actually more black children and it was pretty cool for the most part but I still felt awkward because I knew I was gay and I, that's when I started getting made fun of for being gay at the age of like nine or ten years old whenever um 9-11 happened it was around this time 
and it was just a lot going on in my life like internally most of my struggles have been like mental internal struggles i was blessed to have both parents even though our dad at that time was just really a provider he didn't really have any type of emotional like he was kind of just like a robot like he was all just about work 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 and that was it but i was fortunate to have especially as a black man to have both of my parents throughout my entire life and both of them as a support system. But with me having that, I kept a lot of my struggles to myself because I felt like they weren't really important in the grand scheme of things, especially when everybody around you comes from a one, like a single parent household and dealing with a bunch of other stuff like abuse, money struggles, you name it. So I felt like my struggles were not important like that. So everything that I went through in my life for the longest, I kept to myself. My depression also comes from my lack of self-confidence, y'all. So I come from a very image conscious family. Like we're all very like athletic. Like I'm naturally athletic, even though I didn't really do any sports in school except for like gymnastics and cheerleading. Like I can say that I am a natural athlete, but when I got to middle school, y'all, that's when I gained a lot of weight. Like I was like at least like five, 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 six or something. And then I was like very, very chubby. Y'all, when I tell you, they wore my ass out. I got my ass worn out at school. I got my ass worn out at home, at family functions, you name it. I even called every single name in the book. Like I was considered obese. I was um fat, gay, ugly, black, you name it. Like I've been called every single name in the book and then it, that translated into me having body dysmorphia and me feeling like overall like why am i here like why do like why was i put on earth to constantly feel this way like constantly like feeling like you don't belong feeling like you should shun yourself based on the way that you look or the way people perceive you it's like a lot of people especially in middle school didn't want to take the time to get to know me. Now I will say at times I did lash out. Sometimes I was a class clown. Actually I was a class clown, you know, the whole entire like fat funny person. Like if you if you're gonna be fat, you gotta be funny. Like I was that stereotype. So that was the only way that I would get people to notice me and notice who I am and really try to get to know me on a different level versus the superficial. Because back in middle school, like y'all, it was just all about who looked the best, who had the best clothes, who wore Sean John, Fat Farm, you name it, who had the best cell phone at the time, who had a cell phone at the time. Like that's all it was really about. It was love don't cost a thing, that fucking movie. Like that's what middle school was. That whole entire three years in middle school really damaged me all the way up until today because I still struggle with a um, lack of self-confidence. Uh, trust me, it's taken a lot to get to where I am and I haven't even hit my peak yet. But I will say that like, I still struggle with really low confidence based on my past. Because y'all, even in college, like I was bullied a lot. Like I was looked down upon about my looks. And then no matter how many organizations I joined and how many people I tried to um, kick it with, I just never in college and just never clicked with anybody. And I was just like, is it me? Like, what is wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me to where I still do not fit in? Like, I felt like my whole entire life, I just never fit in with anybody, even to this day. And it, it was just a huge mental struggle for me because I'm just like, what am I doing wrong that is repelling people? Like, why does nobody ever want to talk to me? Like, I used to eat lunch by myself all the time because I just did not feel like I was wanted. I felt like my presence wasn't needed. And overall, I struggled with invisibility as well. I feel like to a lot of people, I'm very invisible and I don't really, it's like people don't really notice me. And then when they do notice me though, I don't know how to take it. It's weird. Like, I didn't really start feeling myself up until I got out of college. I started working at Nordstrom, became a stylist and everybody was pretty like, flocking to me. Everybody was trying to like talk to me, try to be friends with me. Like I made like the most genuine friends when I was at that job at Nordstrom. People that I talk to to this day and I hold near and dear to my heart, like I'm all friends with and I have an abundance of friends. I have almost too many friends to be honest. But it was weird because it was like a weird shift in the universe because out of nowhere, like you're used to being called ugly, you're used to being looked down upon, you're used to not being included and you're used to being invisible. And then now all of a sudden, everybody's giving you all these compliments and they wanna be around you and soak up your energy. And it's just kind of hard for me to take because I'm just like, are you, are you being serious when you say that I look good? Are you being serious when you say you wanna invite me to this thing? Like you want me at this function? Like it's really, 
it's hard for me to take because my whole entire life, like I've just got my ass handed to me and then some. And I think my lack of confidence has kind of translated into my dating life. Now, y'all, I honestly, I haven't really started taking dating seriously up until recently. Um, yes, I've only had one boyfriend and that is going to be a whole story time in itself. It will be coming soon. But I will say I honestly and truthfully have never been in love before. Like I was only thinking I was in love in my previous relationship because he was the first nigga that saw me and the first nigga that took me seriously. But when it comes to dating y'all, like I was taking it seriously, but now that shit is back on the back burner. Like I just, I want no parts of it right now. It is just, it is what it is. But I've had too many like negative experiences in such a short time frame. Now I will say this. To my surprise, I'm able to attract um, high value men, as Kevin Samuels would say, but it never lasts. Like the longest I would say I'm talking to somebody will probably be two weeks and it just falls off. I meet another guy and then they just fall off. I meet somebody else and they just fall off again on some Evelyn Lozada type of shit. Like I attract these men that are very well off and well to do, but it just never lasts. And I'm just over it. It's exhausting and I'm tired of starting over with people. But my depression also comes from me suppressing my voice. Now this is to my own fault. Like I suppress my voice mainly because whenever I speak, especially in public settings, like in group settings, I tend to like come off as a ditzy airhead and may say something that's stupid or I think is stupid, or I may say something that offends people. I have really bad foot and mouth syndrome. I get it from my dad. Um, I tend to say like, people have described me as like bitch pudding from Robot Chicken. Now y'all like, I, I've been told that I'm a shady bitch. It, it, I, I tell you, it's not intentional at all. Like I have a little bit of social awkwardness. It's weird because I thrive in social settings sometimes, but sometimes I'm just very, very awkward. Sometimes I feel like I'm the dumbest in the room. Sometimes I don't say anything. Or sometimes, like I said, I will say something that offends somebody. Now I've been told I'm a funny individual, but I don't approach comedy with intention. Like I'm not, I'm unintentionally funny. Like when I try to be funny, I, I'm not funny. At least I feel that way. But a little story, um, me and my friend Cookie, it was his birthday. We went to my older friend's house that we, we met him at the club the night before and he invited us over for drinks and hookah. So we went to this man's house. He's about, I want to say like 45 or 46 years old, somewhere in that ballpark. And we were talking about the difference between millennials and how we are thriving versus where the baby boomers were back in that day. So mid conversation, I say to this man, I'm like, oh, so you're a baby boomer too, right? And he was like, bitch what <laughs> like that man jumped up he was just like D don't you say no shit like that again like it was so awkward i was just like oh shit because i did not like i completely forgot the time frame for like when the baby boomers were born so i just asked him like it was like an honest question like oh so you're a baby boomer too right y'all it was so awkward but yet it was so funny when i tell you cookie gagged bitch like i was just like Whoo. Okay, but hey, I sat there and I played it off y'all. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, the man still has a crush on me, so hey. But yeah, I am a very socially awkward individual. I suppress my voice because I just, I don't want to say any dumb shit, especially dumb shit like that. But I've learned over the years that I have to stop doing that because I've suppressed myself to a point where I don't fully know exactly who I am. And a lot of my depression stems from the fact that I don't fully know my purpose yet. And I'm trying my hardest to find it each and every day. And it's a true struggle for me. And I do tend to get jealous. I'm not even gonna sit there and lie to you. I do get jealous of my friends and the people that I care about because it just seems like everybody is in this world thriving and I'm just like always in last place. And I don't wanna be in last place, you know? I wanna be able to stand tall, stand as a man, never above anybody, and just figure out who I am and just go through life and just have fun. But me always chasing something has really caused me to not even like sit back and smell the roses for once. And then in regards to purpose, y'all, like I have a job that I honestly truthfully don't care about. Like I, I don't give a shit about this job at all. Um, I'm mainly just doing it so it, I, it can pay my bills and fund my little lifestyle. It, it, it ain't really hitting on shit to be honest, but I'm very thankful to have it. But I just want something else to come. And I keep on going on these job interviews and I just keep getting the run around to where it's so exhausting. Honestly and truthfully, I don't even want to really work a job, but I need a job right now to fund my life 
and fund the businesses that I'm going to create. But it's just like, ugh, can I just get something that is stimulating to me for once? Like, Jesus Christ. And yes, I've tried therapy. Um, I do want to go back to therapy at some point. I had a great therapist, but I could tell that she was going through a lot of shit. And sometimes she would show up to sessions pretty late. And then on top of that, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I'm just like, you know what, this money could probably be allocated to somewhere else that's more important right now. So that's kind of on the back burner. And I do meditate daily, like every day, like twice a day. And I do what I can to get myself out of depression. But y'all, it is a huge, huge bitch. Um, I would love for you guys to drop down in the comments and let me know how you guys deal with depression if you have it or how you have a loved one that deals with their depression. Like, I really want to know you guys' experiences with depression because it is just, yeah, like it is just the most, y'all. Like, I, I just, I can't even deal. But that's just a little transparent video for you guys. I will come at you guys with some more content that's a lot more fun and upbeat and happy because this channel for me, for the most part, is therapeutic. And I do, I am a person that's all about shits and giggles, but every now and then we got to have a balance, y'all. We have to talk about some real shit every now and then. But those are my views. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Hit that notification bell, subscribe. And I'm going to come at you guys with some more content.